You have been buried with Christ in baptism, through which you also rose again by faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As once again we celebrate the mysteries of Easter and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus from the dead, we begin by calling to mind our sins and asking for the grace of his forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who, through the regenerating power of baptism, have been pleased to confer on us eternal life. Grant, we pray, that those you render capable of immortality by justifying them may, by your guidance, attain the fullness of glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Cilicia, Paul went to Derbe and then on to Lystra. Here there was a disciple called Timothy, whose mother was a Jewess who had become a believer, but his father was Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of Timothy, and Paul, who wanted to have him as a travelling companion, had him circumcised. This was on account of the Jews in the locality where everyone knew his father was a Greek. As they visited one town after another, they passed on the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem with instructions to respect them. So the churches grew strong in the faith, as well as growing daily in numbers. They travelled through Phrygia and the Galatian country, having been told by the Holy Spirit not to preach the word in Asia. When they reached the frontier of Mysia, they thought to cross it into Bithynia, but as the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them, they went through Mysia and came down to Troas. One night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian appeared and appealed to him in these words, Come across to Macedonia and help us. Once he had seen this vision, we lost no time in arranging a passage to Macedonia, convinced that God had called us to bring them the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing for joy. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people the sheep of his flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord, who hung for us upon the tree, has risen from the tomb. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me before you. If you belonged to the world, the world would love you as its own. 
But because you do not belong to the world, because my choice withdrew you from the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the words I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you too. If they kept my word, they will keep yours as well. But it will be on my account that they will do all this, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If it's true that during Lent, the Fridays of that season have a focus on the cross of Jesus, it's also true that the Saturdays of Easter have a very obvious focus on baptism. We heard mention of baptism in the entrance antiphon of Mass today and in the opening prayer. And this is, of course, because a few weeks ago, on a Saturday night, the Easter Vigil was the time when adults would be baptised. And Easter was a season when the whole church celebrated those newly born again into the faith. All of us are invited in the Easter season to think about our baptism, how our baptism makes us part of Jesus, how, how in many ways it fulfils the words that he spoke in the Gospel. My choice withdrew you from the world. Baptism, our second birth, has done something to us. It's drawn us into the kingdom of heaven. And what we've got to do as we live our Christian lives is we've got to consider what does that mean? What does it mean that I am chosen by Jesus, that I am born again in Jesus, that I am withdrawn from the world? Even though I have to live in the world, even though I have to do the things that everyone has to do day by day, yet, as Jesus says, I must not belong to the world. Now, this, as he warns in the Gospel, can open the door to all sorts of disagreement or even hostility or persecution, when the way of the Gospel, the way that we have been born into, is not the way of the world. If you did belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. But because we have received this gift, Therefore, we run the risk that the world will not understand, the world will not agree with, the world will not accept our way of Christian living. That's a challenge, but it's one that we must accept. In the first reading, we heard St Paul continuing his travels. It did sound like a little bit of a, a travel log with a list of destinations in the first reading today. But perhaps the most important part came at the very end. When Paul has this vision, this vision of a Macedonian saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Perhaps we don't understand fully what the significance of that is. Up until now, Paul and Barnabas and Timothy and all the other apostles have been preaching in very much a Jewish world. Whether that's Jerusalem, whether it's Antioch, whether it's Turkey, they go first to synagogues to speak the word there. Macedonia is Greece. It's Europe. It's almost like a foreign world. And in many ways, that's perhaps why Paul hasn't gone there yet. So this vision, this invitation, this is an important step in that universal unfolding of the message of salvation. Paul will travel across to Greece and he will change his style of preaching. Yes, he'll still be visiting the synagogues where we can find them, but he'll be actually proclaiming the word of Jesus to people who have not heard of the God of the Old Testament, to people who have not heard about God's promises, who do not know what a Messiah is. Paul is opening up a whole new preaching of Jesus. And what he's doing is inviting others to become part of that, just as Jesus said in the Gospel. Paul's mission is to help others to know that they are chosen by Jesus, that they can receive this new birth, that they can be part of his kingdom. Eastertide is the season where we celebrate the growth of the family of the church, where we celebrate that mystery of baptism. So today, let each of us give thanks for our own baptism, which withdrew us from this world. And let's pray that we may be able to understand what that means for our daily living, what that means for our choices, for our priorities, what's in our minds and hearts and mouths, so that we may truly belong to Jesus who has given us new life.
let's think of the prayers that we offer at Mass today. And first we pray for our parish community, for all its members, old and young, wherever we may be. But that mystery of baptism which binds us together in Jesus may always be present in our minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all those who are searching for meaning and purpose in life, that the message of the Gospel may find its home in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a moment or two in silence, let's think of our own prayers and intentions for this Mass. Most loving Father, hear the prayers of your children and grant that the gifts we received at our baptism may constantly strengthen us in belonging to Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, so that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfilment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up 
Foi. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Now, at the Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Father, I pray for them that they may be one in us, so that the world may believe it was you who sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, so that, redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. Quia, quem meru isti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia.